so welcome to this video lecture so this is the continuation of the previous class so we are uh, so in the lecture 5 we have seen the type 1 problem so now also we are going to see, i'm going to give some more examples how to divide a type 1 problem suppose we have so how many examples we have taken six so this is seventh example suppose we have like this f of x by x minus a into x minus b so now observe so i am not writing uh, exact polynomials here i am writing general polynomial general proper fraction so you should observe this is proper because uh, type 1 problem is a proper one proper fraction so so this f of x uh, may be first degree or less than first degree means constant so so because uh, denominator is second degree numerator should be less than the denominator degree right okay so clearly denominator contains two distinct polynomials so two distinct linear polynomials product of two distinct linear polynomials so what is a method to divide so we have to divide in this way a by x minus a b by x minus b now now take another f of x by suppose here x plus a into x plus b so some someone will get the doubt here x minus a x minus b so we are writing a by x minus a and b by x minus b if uh, what what we have to write if x plus a x plus a or x minus a both are we have to treat that as linear polynomial so we have to divide this one in the same same way x by b by x plus b a by first one b by second one that's it now see another one so i have this one x minus a x minus b x minus c so clearly here denominator contains product of three distinct linear factors linear polynomials right okay so we have to divide this one a by x minus a plus b by x minus b plus c by x minus c so this is capital c this is small one small c so here we have three three product of three distinct two poly, linear polynomials that's why we are getting right side as three fractions here we are expressing a big fraction into sum of algebraic sum of three simple fractions that is our aim so now i am going to write another one x minus a x minus b x minus c x minus d so denominator contains clearly product of distinct linear factors this all are distinct x minus a is different from x minus b x minus b is different from all others so this is also type one problem type one problem means denominator contains product of distinct polynomials right so x minus a so constant by second one that is x minus b plus c by x minus c plus d by x minus d now eleventh one so observe all our proper's only proper fractions only right so now we have denominator x minus a one x minus a two and so on x minus a n so now denominator contains x minus a one x minus a two x minus a three x minus a four dash 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 and so on x minus a n means here denominator contains product of n distinct linear polynomials so here we have n factors that's why we have to write right side n fractions so a by x minus a one so here we have n factors but a b c d are twenty six only so that is uh, not the best way to write so that's why i am taking constants as a one plus a two by x minus a two and so on plus a n by x minus a n if you take a b c d e f g h up to z so the alphabets are just twenty six only but we don't know the n term n is less than twenty six or more than two. that's why i am taking constants for the sufficient a one a two a three you can write any constants here 
okay got it right so i wanted to write another one x minus a1 better to write plus now anything you can write x plus a2 and so on x plus a n x plus b1 x plus b2 and so on x plus bm so now how many factors we have we have 1 2 3 4 5 n again 1 2 3 4 5 m n plus m now denominator contains n plus m distinct linear factors product so this is also type 1 right so how can you divide this one so which is equals to so a1 by x plus a1 plus a2 by x plus a2 and so on a n by x plus a n so up to here we have completed a capital a1 by first one a2 by second one a3 by third one a4 by fourth one similar a n by nth one next i am writing for this one so let us change constant for conveniently b1 by x plus b1 plus b2 by x plus b2 and so on plus bm so here we have m terms so bm by x plus bm so this is the method to divide a type 1 problem as partial fractions so if you follow this method you 100 percent you will solve all the problems right let us solve the problems how to resolve a complex fraction as partial fraction so right first question problem one so after completing some problems on type one we will discuss type two problem okay right so the question is resolve one by x plus one into x plus two into into partial fractions partial fractions right so now we have to divide this complex fraction as algebraic sum of simple fractions here we have a big fraction so i don't want this big fraction i wanted to express this fraction big fraction as sum of simple fractions so that is my aim so i am going to solve this one right so let us call this as problem number one solution so now take this one so so this is clearly type one problem proper and type one because denominator contains distinct linear factors right so let x plus one by x plus two is equal to so how we have to divide this one so this is type one because uh, denominator contains distinct linear factors no so that's why i'm writing a by x plus one plus b by x plus two so call this as equation one so now what is our m we have to find capital a and capital b values right so if you find capital a and capital b and if you by substituting here if you solve the right side we have to get this one that is the exact uh, solution of the problem right so <coughs> now solve a and b so now follow this processor so this implies so left side is as it is so now find out the lcm of these two denominators what is LCM of these two denominators? Clearly, these two are different, different terms, no? So, these two are different. Okay? So, these two are different. So, choose any method. X plus 1, comma, X plus 2. So, first, it, is, it will go on X plus 1. So, X plus 1, one time. So, it doesn't go on second term. So, write as it is. Then, take X plus 2, X plus 2. It doesn't go here. Keep as it is this number. X plus 2, go once here. 1 into 1, 1, 1 into x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2 into x plus 1, x plus 1. So the LCM is x plus 1. So here the problem, in this problem, denominator has two 
two linear polynomial product. So that's why we are finding LCM. But if we have 10, 20, 30 linear polynomials or some other degree polynomials, what we have to do in that case? So easy, very easy, no need to find LCM here. So it is enough to write this uh, left side denominator here. X plus 1 into X plus 2. So we find LCM of these two, we get definitely this uh, left side denominator. So that's why no need to find again LCM. Actually, procedure is we have to find LCM. But I am suggesting you that no need to find LCM. Better to write this, uh, this side denominator. Right? Okay. So, LCM is this one now. Now, what you have to do? This denominator by this denominator. Right? X plus 1 into X plus 2 by X plus 1. This denominator by to get the numerator of first fraction, we have to divide this denominator by first denominator, x plus 1. So clearly x plus 1, x plus 1 get cancelled. What is the remaining function here? x plus 2. Now multiply this x plus 2 with numerator. So we get numerator here, a into x plus 2. Right? So this plus as it is here. Next, again take this denominator. To get the numerator of uh, this fraction, so we have to divide this denominator with second denominator. X plus 1, X plus 1 into X plus 2 by X plus 2. X plus 2, X plus 2 get cancelled. Remaining function here, X plus 1. This X plus 1 into numerator. B into X plus 1. Okay. So clearly, both side denominators. So both side denominators are same. So we can cancel this two. So now what is the remaining values here? 1 into A into X plus 2 plus B into X plus 1. Now call this as 2. Okay? So by, so use any method here. So you can choose, uh, we can compare both side uh, co-options or we can uh, substitute the suitable values. You can choose any method. But we have to solve this equation too for a and b and after getting a and b values we have to substitute in equation 1. But um, I am approaching the best method that suitable substitution method. That is the best method for type 1 problems. So what is the suitable value? So no need to worry about that. So suitable values are first bracket is first suitable value, second bracket is second suitable value. That's it. Now put x plus 2 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0 means send this plus to this side, x is equals minus 2. So x plus 2 equals 0 or x is equals minus 2, both are same. In, in 2, in 2. So this implies what we get. There is no x term left side, no, no need to write any x value here. 1 is equal such to x plus 2 here. So x plus 2 is 0, 0 into a is 0. So first term 0. Next b, in place of x we have to write minus 2. Minus 2 plus 1, minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, minus 1 into b, minus b. So this implies 0 minus b minus b, so 1 equal to minus b, this implies b equal to minus 1. Next, next suitable value is x plus 1 equals 0, second bracket is next suitable value. x plus 1 equals 0 or x is equals to minus 1, put these values in 2. So, so this will second term will vanish. Substitute here x equals minus 1. Minus 1 plus 1, 1. 1 into a, a, a equal to 1. So we get, we get a equal to 1. So now substitute a and b values in equation 1. So therefore, substitute a and b values in equation 1. We get 1 by x plus 1 into x plus 2 is equals to a is 1 by x plus 1 plus minus 1 by x plus 2. So this is a required fraction, required partial fraction. So we will see in the next video very clearly in different methods also. Thank you for watching. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe.